Yeah. Hey, you go back to the good old days of tin cans and strings for when you wanted to communicate. Yep. Or crystal crystal set with a wire, you know, hundred hundred meters up the strung up the yard uh, for the aerial, and and then mum and dad had come in, checked to see I was asleep and not listening to my uh, my crystal set, my homebrew crystal set, and it went out. I was. I had it amplified that much. I could hear it through the pillow. <laughs> <laughs> I my my the only sports that I enjoy is is auto racing and when I was seven or eight I listened to the Indy 500 on a crystal radio while my family was inside watching it on the television oh, nice. <laughs> yeah. yeah well, we didn't have, I was five when, when TV came into came to Australia so <laughs> You know, and the kids don't realise that there was no TV. Yeah. And, and my dad grew up before radio. So, uh, you know, well, that must have been a really different time. <laughs> I mean, kids today are like internet uh, addicted, right? Like, they yeah. can't believe a time before the internet when you could just instantly search for anything you wanted to search for. Yeah. Me too. You had to open a book and read it to learn something? Or yeah, visit that mysterious building called a library? What, what's a library? Yeah. Well, well, my kids um, had Encarta and all of those on CD-ROM, you know, which is completely different to it being on the internet. And now my mum's amazed if we go, to, go down there, and, you know, she's almost 90, and we'll say, hey, Siri, what what so and so? <laughs> well, everybody, it's two o'clock. Let's start our Propeller Two forum um, today. Obviously, we have Jim Bagley, hey. a, aka Baggers. Are you here, Jim? Yep, I'm here. Can you hear me? Can you see yes, me? Yes, sir. I don't know why the camera's not working. Yep, you sound really good. Thanks for joining can us. Can you see? Can you see me though? Can't see you but we can't hear you. Right, uh, let me just swap and... Oh, did not start with it. Right, try that. Not good with technology, are you, Jim? No. <laughs> well, while Jim okay. gets that work in... Um... Right. Let me see if I can... <laughs> Whether that's Coley, right? It is, yeah. yeah. On the forums, Graham there. Yeah, that's right. Hi, how you doing, guys? Great Good to see day. you back here. Thank you. Well, before we let uh, Jim get started, there are some new Quick Bites posted. I just pasted a link in the chat if you want to peruse them. And we have at least a dozen waiting to be posted. As Johnny Mac has been writing code furiously lately. So <laughs> go, Johnny Mac. Yeah, yeah, I've been working with some of the stuff and it's a lot of fun. I, I think you may have seen my multi-analog input project that's for a customer. So obviously- I had a yeah, right. comment about the wireless programming one. It only describes the method where you connect to the web page and drag and drop a already compiled file. Isn't there a mechanism where you can just download directly to it? There is, but I don't think it's built into prop tool. Blockly has it. Yeah, and, and uh, FlexProp has it, I think, now with Load2P. I think you got it working. Okay, we will, so we'll, we'll verify and add that in. That's something we want to show. Yeah, being able to just hit F10 and have it go to the wireless is oh, yeah. uh, pretty nice. That's preferred, yeah. Okay, I'll talk to uh, the author. Michael wrote that one. And um, we are definitely paying attention to the threads on the forums about the need for the data sheet. So that'll be, that's Chip's job. Other things that are happening, um, we're trying to systematically clean up our pages for the newcomer to the P2 to make things a little easier. So on the software page, we have now an overview of the tools and I can add 
whatever you want into this chart. Um, so send me your contributions for any, any tools that are not featured here. It has all the obvious stuff that I'm aware of right now. Uh, Catalina. Oh, okay. Catalina. It is uh, updated for P2 now. That's, and who's the author so I can get the details? Uh, Ross H on the forums. Oh, wow. Okay, good. Um, it's actually, it, do, it still does P1 as well. So it's P1 and P2 for Catalina. Nice. Does that also allow the support of spin objects through C? Uh, I don't think he has that. Um, he has a mechanism where you can compile the dat section of a spin object and then link to it somehow, but it's kind of a funky old mechanism similar to what uh, prop GCC did, I think, in the old days. Okay, I'll get with Ross and we'll add that to the chart. Um, if you're trying to ordering trying to order parts from us, the prop plugs are going out of stock and we're we're building 500 right now, but it's going to probably take about a, a four or five days before they're in inventory. So just so you know, often a little piece like this will hang up the shipment of big orders. So it's unfortunate, but um, we are still running a little behind with production. So there the circuit boards are. Nice. That's kind of nice. I still like the, the circuit boards. I just like the pictures of them. <laughs> and it's then all about, I, it's all about making something. Uh, Ken, an observation about your software page. Yeah. Uh, it looks like the chart itself is not coming up. It's generating an error when I load the page. What browser are you using? Chrome. Huh. And it's the color two software page. It and it's yeah. an error. Okay, thanks. That's interesting. Sure. Hey, you take this warning, invalid JSON response. Figure that one out. Okay. <laughs> I'll look at that. Uh, in regards to the exception. Works for me. Works for me as well. I'm on Chrome on Windows 10. It works for me. Yeah, I'm on Chrome Windows 10 too. All right, Stephen. Let me know what version <laughs> you're using. Uh, latest for Mac OS. Oh. Uh, it's the dreaded Mac OS difference. Three letter word. Be nice. <laughs> um, I, I was saying the dreaded difference, not anything derogatory about Macs. <laughs> oh, no, I'm just heckling. <laughs> anyway, uh, you already know this, but the P2 accessory set are now available uh, a la carte, so you can get the pieces. Those are all That's posted. Exciting. Yeah, it is. And then uh, we're waiting for these and I have got confirmation they will be here before Chinese New Year. And it seems like a, a small point, but it's really a big deal because they're really shut down for a whole month when February comes. And Kevin has posted a new video. Um, I don't think I've shared it. Here it is. This is using the P1, and you can see in this video, he's doing a pretty good job programming in C and writing his own, own stuff, not just following our tutorials. So good job, Kevin. And then next week, we'll have some important news about uh, kids that are getting started, Parallax, and all of you. So details to follow on that. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty vague, I know. Have we done? The king of vague, Ken Greasy. <laughs> uh, next week, Johnny Mac on Wednesday. And here are three links for that. The first one is um, that you could buy a display that he's going to be using. Or, or if you don't want to do that from us, you can buy them from Amazon. Or if you don't want to buy anything at all, you don't have to because your P2 Edge has also this flash memory built in. So we'll be using his spy object. So John, I have to say in your choice, it made me happy when I found out I could bypass the digit generator ROM. <laughs> and that was all I have to say because we have a very special guest today. Everybody Hello. welcome Jim Bagley <laughs> and his 50,000 person fan club. <laughs> maybe not that many but yeah um right so 
let me, I don't think you'll get sound with this because it comes through on the, um, sound comes through the AV add-on to the um, P2H. So um, I've got the video on HDMI going in, but I haven't got any audio, so you won't be able to hear it unless Chip can play it for me on his. Uh, yeah. That might be, might be better. So we're jumping straight into the game. Yep, may as well show you what it's all about. Sorry to put you on the spot there, Chip. <laughs> I should have it, let's see. The most famous games back in the late 70s. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I'm not even looking at the screen. I'm just pressing some buttons. <laughs> but those are the sound effects. <laughs> yeah. We can't see I, it, Chip, so. I, I right. can't either. Well, I'd have to switch my monitor, but <laughs> when I run the program, right. I can. It's all right, Chip. I'll. I'll oh, oh, wait, the, John. Uh, wait. Jim, do you want me to show my screen? Is that what you're saying? Yeah, but it's, it's oh, all right. It's, okay, you, hold you on. Know, well, then, yeah. Let my talk okay. the I sounds. I thought you just wanted the sounds. Hold on there. Here we go. Okay, this is all analog, right? So, okay, I'm going to run the program. And conveniently enough, Chip has his display <laughs> rotated 90 degrees for us. Yep. So, it's the so right there way it up. is. Wow. Move back it's a little bit. It looks beautiful here, the colors. Always when you try to show a video screen on a video camera, it just, it goes yeah. all white and barely color, but it looks real pretty here. That's definitely the anyway, way to play it in a screen like that. Yeah, it is, isn't it? You know, I'll hit the button here. See, I have, Here's the setup right here, right? We've got HDMI on 48, is that 48? Yep, 48. And then uh, on zero, we have a little control button board. And then we the have- four, four button with four LEDs and then the and AV. Then the audio on out on the AV 24. board. 24, on 24. Yes, yeah, on 24. So, okay, yep. so now you'll see, I'm gonna hit the start button and Let's see. Yeah, you say I get moving the little bass around and I can shoot. Here, I'll get killed here and see. <laughs> anyway, there's the old game. Yep. Oh, all its glory. I was waiting for the saucer siren. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that, that was a pain because that, that, that was, um, it plays looped, but it just sets a flag and it leaves the flag set until the UFO is dead. And it just loops the, that, that one channel. There's nine different sound effects. So there's nine channels of audio that can be played at once, but I'll, I'll go into that as we go through the code. Um, right, let me, do I need to swap my camera or do, do I need, should I um, share screen? Yeah, okay. you can do that. Yep. Mm -hmm. All right, for me, sharing screen. Uh, I could probably just share the, uh, I share that. Can you see that okay? Beautiful. Yeah. Yep. 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 Right. Um, so, started off, set the clock rate for 25, uh, 250 meg for HDMI. Set the control base, P2 
pins to zero, and then the keys that are left and right are the top two as you're looking at the board into the um, the top two being the ones closest to the whiteboard. Then you've got start is the one on the bottom left and fire on the bottom right. Then you've got the AV base, which is the for the audio, which is on uh, the set of eight pins on 24. And you have the, the mic, which we don't use, obviously, on pin five. And then we've got left pin and right pin on six and seven. But we, we use, as it's mono, we just put both sounds through left and right. And then we've got the HDMI on, pins 48 on. Right, um, the, I don't know how many of you know, but the screen on um, Space Invaders is 256 wide. Well, wide when you, you talk about the screen in the correct, well, in the, in a normal landscape portrait, landscape mode, not portrait, it's 256 by 224. So I went with a, a um, the, Chips 640 by 480 example HDMI driver and then modified it. And then we got a white pixel offset of eight pixels in to have a border at the top and border at the bottom because it's only 224 instead of 240. Um, and we've got um, basically the whole thing is an 8080 emulator and the actually, I should have. Should have done the whole screen, really, shouldn't I? Let me just stop sharing. I'll do the whole screen. Um, right, you can see the whole screen now. Um, why does that have to be at the top? I can't move it. Good. Right. The uh, 8080 chip sh uh, instruction set is there's only 256 instructions and each one is here and then you've got the amount of cycles it takes uh, no, the amount of bytes it takes and, and then the amount of cycles um, because we're not really it, it, the game is driven on the interrupts and it's got weights we, I didn't need to worry about it being cycle accurate, so we don't need to worry about you know, each instruction being just uh, 10 and 4 cycles because it runs a hell of a lot faster, as you can imagine, because the props run at 250 meg. Um, and then these bits underneath are the flags, which are the S, which is the sign, Z, the 0, A, the um, auxiliary um, carry, which is for um, usually for DAA instructions, um, where you've got two nibbles, and if you want to like for scores, for example, like if you want to add values, so when it goes over nine, it'll set the auxiliary flag to say that you need need to do a DAA instruction, which will adjust the value to be what it should be in like hex nibbles um, and then you've got your parity bit which is the p and the carry flag which is it and they're the positions in the, the flag and you've got the registers a and f which makes psw and 80 80 then we've got b and c or you can join them together to make a 16-bit register bc same with D and E, which you can join them together to make um, D E and H and L, which you can join together to make H L. And then you've got your stack point, uh, stack pointer, and your program counter. Right, as you can see by these colorings, you've got loads of different clumps of um, like this whole section is all moving registers between each other, and then these are operations like. Eight adds, eight add with carry, you know, with a different register, and then sub, and then subtract with carry, and and 
and then XOR, then O, and compare. And then we've got um, retain non zero, retain no carry, retain parity odd, and um, retain positive, and pop BC, pop DE. And anyway, there's all the instructions for 8080. So to do this on the prop, In that transport. To do it on the prop, I started doing an emulator and um, I've got I had a debug cog which is commented out because it was for going through and um, printing values on the screen. But I started with the HDMI one, which was a, a um, 640 by 480, and I made some changes to it. Um, I can't even remember what the first one was, but what I did was um, instead of the 10 blanks that Chip had originally, I took two back because I wanted to use two for um, like a preemptive like setup for the render cog so we can draw um, the scan line to a buffer. So what this does is this um, this one will uh, start off um, setting the line counter to zero to let other cogs know. Then sets two blanks, or well, waits two blanks while it, the other the render cog draws, and then it starts drawing them, but it points to the next one. So it points to the next one to let the render cog know it needs to draw that one. And then it draws the first buffer twice and then it'll increase the counter and then draw the second buffer twice or the second line twice. Um, because it's 480 deep because it's 640, 480. But because we only do, need to do 240, I draw the same line twice. And then um, on the Space Invaders, it has an interrupt around 90 odd um, scan lines down, which is like a halfway, uh, it's not halfway, but it's like into the screen when it, it has a second interrupt, which they use. So I just put it at 96. It's minus 224 uh, minus 96 because we're drawing 240. Actually, it was 224 a while ago, and then I changed it. But it doesn't really matter where exactly this starts, so it, it'll be actually less. That should be 240 now. Um, so it just kicks off and the half screen interrupt at line around that line 96, and then loops back to draw all 240 lines. Um, and then we have the bottom blank lines. And then obviously the the vertical blank sinks. And then that was it really for the changes on that, other than um, the two scan line pointers and a line counter and a V sync and the half sync flags. Um, other than that, it's pretty much identical to the original. And hey, then I had. We should point out that even though this thing runs fast, what regulates the speed is the is the uh, video interrupt. Yeah. Okay, so the game well, like, runs every time the interrupt occurs, right? Yeah. Yeah. The, the actual there's like a game loop that just does the drawing of these sprites and you know, and then the interrupts update what's going on. So. If, if there's well, not drawing of the sprites, the drawing of the characters or anything, whatever needs drawing on on the, the screen in that particular stage of where the game is, like right? whether it's on the title screen or the demo or when you're playing the game, and then the interrupts is what handles all the logic. Um, and so in the game, the the, the actual draw loop um, does it three times. Um, so it runs through its little draw loop three times before 
we get to the first interrupt half, halfway down the screen. And then it does it another three times and then you get the um, interrupt for the end of the V blank. And um, obviously the prop does it quite a bit faster. Um, I haven't figured out exactly how many times faster, but it was it was drawing um, it was doing the draw loop ten times, but that was including doing debug to tell me how many times it was drawing it, which is quite slow because it has to send out the the data. So it was a lot more than ten times faster, it, a lot more than three times faster. Sorry. Anyway, hey, um, can you show a place where you use debug in here? Do you have some debug comments? Oh yeah. Um, because when he was bringing up his emulator, of course, it needed some debugging, so he was able to use the yeah. debug. What I, I did, um, yeah, if we go into the actual emulator itself, we can um, actually. I will put the stuff in, and then. I've already bug on. And this should still work. Hopefully, fingers crossed. <laughs> Typical. Um, right, what can I take out? I can take up this debug stuff here. Um, don't want to stay new instruction. Doesn't is there any way of finding out how many it's over by, Chip? Oh, did it get too big? Yeah. Uh, oh, boy. Well, you can just not, uncomment some stuff and see. Yeah, how. I'll, I'll just, just uncomment some, some of them. Um, I'll uncomment the. Actually, now those only comment the values. One, one long. Before. Uh, the ones after. Right. There we go. Right. Now. What should happen? I can't remember what I had. Oh, yeah. Right, let me let me start that again. Now I had like the first instruction. Yeah, you know, if I show you Space Invaders, right, I wrote a program to disassemble uh, the ROMs. So we got an op, an op. Well, this disassembles into Z80. Instead of like um, eighty eighty, but it's it's exactly the same instructions, more or less for eighty eighty, just worded differently. So it's an off, 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 and then a jump AD nine. And if we go to AD nine, set up the stack pointer, and then load B with zero, and then clears a bit of RAM. So if we, if I single step now, so like it's got um, reg PC, so it starts at zero. And then temp value is the, is the three bytes that are after the instruction, and uh, gives. I, I got it to print a little um, the instructions, which basically just prints um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen bytes for each, um, up, up to sixteen bytes for each instru instruction, and add a, a basically a big string. It prints as F12. 
right and then why is that gone to nine hang on start it again right so we've got the knob and then it, it tell, here we've got um the registers pc and byte one and then word two is them two bytes that after the first word, in case it's a load HL with an address or whatever. Then we've got um, stack pointer, AF flags, uh, B, well, A register and flags. And you've got B and C, D and E, and H and L. And then, so next one, um, hang on, why is that nine? Should not be known. I probably enabled something I shouldn't have. Well, it's probably taking up too much. Jim, question for you. Yep. Interrupt you. The three no ops in a row at the start of at the start of the uh, ROM. What was the reason for those? Um, I don't know. They probably used that as a jump for um, their development stuff, maybe. Okay. Probably. So it it could have been like if they'd have had. Um, I know, jump jump to an address if they wanted to modify it to like jump to a certain part of the game or jump to a I think bit it uses of code. A cold that... start or warm start uh, yeah, jump exactly. vector in TPM. So that's probably a carryover from eighty eighty itself. Um, how do I? So yeah. As you can see, it's stopped, but I can. Oh. Let's see if I can get it back to working again. It's a problem with. Uh... It's just that, wasn't it? Anyway, I, I used a lot of the debug features when I was work, working on it to um, make sure that I could um, stop on each instruction. That's in there. Which one is there? Yeah, that's working again. Right. Um, ah, I know why. <laughs> we had this trouble, didn't we, when we were doing it a little while ago, um, Chip, I don't know if you can remember. But the problem was, ha what was happening was, um, because it uses interrupts, and the interrupt is is triggered by the HDMI driver. Right. Obviously, you're only, I'm only pausing the CPU execution. Oh, you can miss the interrupt. Yeah. And it misses the interrupts. So it's constantly setting the interrupt flag and then it's constantly jumping to address at eight. And that's why it was at nine because it was doing the eight instruction. So yeah, but before we, we got to the point where we had to turn the interrupts on, I was using um, the single step to cycle through to make sure the instructions were working. And I also had a, um, Also had an eighty eighty um, test program that was 
made in 1980. Um, it's basically a CPM um, test program that I um, modified because it, it used to do um, calls to address five to print. So I just um, changed a bit of code at address five to make it um, write to a buffer at 8,000 hex where I knew the code wasn't. So it'd write that string to 8,000 and just keep writing until it for whatever it needed. And so I was, I'd use the extensively single, single stepping through the, um, the test program, testing each individual instruction to make sure that ads work correctly and the carry worked correctly and all the flags work correctly. And so that was like a really important part. And I can't thank Chip enough for having the, the ability to, to do that debug stuff. And the fact that you can like, it takes up like very little code in the cog because it, it was very tight. One instruction yeah. for debug, no matter how much is in the debug. Yeah. So that was that that in itself is awesome. The fact that you can do that with with one instruction. Because it, it it's as you can see, it's it was pretty tight in the cog. Um and it overflowed obviously into the um right, let's show you where well, actually it actually wound up. Goes up. Your whole emulator wound up fitting in the cog, right? I mean, it, it took up. Yours, do, yours does. Your, your version of it does because you're using the um, X, X byte, which right. we're going to after. But I mean, yours does too. It takes up the reg, most of the register space. And yeah, then it take, the takes the register space and then, and then it goes into the lot space as well. Um, yeah, but it, it still fits in the cog. You're not having to branch out to any hub yeah, code. To yeah, you're not having to branch out to hub code for, for anything which is, is quite nice. Um, so, and that's including um, the lot, having the, um, the jump table for each, all 256 instructions in the lot as well. So that's all in the cog. So you can actually get rid of the, the, the RAM once, you've, once it's loaded up. So if, you, if you're really tight with your, if you really, no need the space you can get it back um hey, you know what show them how a uh how you like would well you pick up along right so what he's doing is he's emulating an old processor from this was first made yeah. in like 73 wasn't it i think i saw yeah yeah 73 yeah and uh so he's what he does is he has a program that runs in the cog that picks yeah. up the object code that was written for this 8080 processor byte by byte and then right. runs some, so it's, some native code in order to emulate the uh, function of the 8080. Right, so in, in the domain loop of the cog, it's basically the execution loop. We've got, it gets um, the program counter, adds the, um, the address for the the base address for the 64k of virtual RAM and then reads a byte and puts that in byte one and then it reads another two bytes and puts that in in word two because that's usually for um like when you've got load a red a 16-bit register with a word or a jump or a call so um i just set them them up automatically every instruction to save doing it on each instruction like on the call and on the on the the loads and stuff so i've i've always got a copy of the the three first three bytes of the instruction whether it's one byte or three then i um that's commented out then it just calls the execute 8080 which executes just one instruction and then just jumps back to the loop, which then reads another byte, well, another three bytes, and then, um, and then we've got the debound stuff, which I used for me debugging to you know, press the keys to single step, and I had um, jump to a breakpoint so I could set a breakpoint so I could fast forward to a, a certain address and then stop there and then single single step, which saved a lot of time because um, 
otherwise single stepping through a program while it's you know, checking instructions. Took quite a while. Um, so anyway, on the 8080, so when it starts, I, I've got the option to turn the interrupts off. Um, it, it reads our flag to see if we've got an interrupt and then um, if it's not set, then don't do the half screen interrupt. And then the vertical blank check to see if, see if it is. And what happens is if, if we had a, an interrupt, all I do is I store the program counter in a temporary value and then just push that onto the stack and then change the, um, the PC to eight. Or for the other one, I um, store the PC on the stack and then set the program counter to 10 hex. So that's the two jump vectors for the interrupts. And then here I've just set up a bit of um, stuff to change the border color. When the program counter hits certain addresses, that was when we were doing the um, debugging. So I could see how many times it goes through the game loop and and when the top board, the border for the top interrupt, well, the half screen interrupt, the V blank interrupt, and the um, the retain address of both interrupts. I see um, when he's running this loop, he's, he's, he's each time through this loop, he picks up and executes an instruction, which is one, two, or three bytes in length. And then if he yep. sees that an interrupt condition exists, he simply pushes Just the the current, uh, the current address current. onto the stack, and then he and then he jumps to uh, the interrupt, you know, yep. either 08 or 10, which simulates uh, what's called an RST instruction, and um, that's how he implements the interrupts in the emulator. Yeah, and then we tell the uh, do a CPU get next byte, which um, that is all that does is it gets the um, current ad um, PC address, adds one to the address, and then um, adds it with um, FFFF to keep it in the 16, it's 64K chunk. Adds the 64K RAM address and then reads the byte and returns. So that just gets the next byte which is our first instruction, well, the first base of our instruction. Um, clears word to there. Then we add the, the temp value is the first byte. And then we add um, the cycle pointer, because I've got a, a list of, at the bottom of the code, I've got a cycle table, which has all the cycles for each instruction. Not that we use it yet, but I was, it, it caters for them ready for if we need to go that extra extra um, step to get, get it cycle accurate. Um, go back to where we were before. Yeah. So it reads the byte, uh, adds the the byte from the offset into the cycle table cycle table adds it to cycles, and then just says how many cycles we, you've got in the debug if I enable that line. Um, then what I do is I get byte one, which is the instruction byte, and then copy it to mid three, and then shift it right um, four times, and then end it with three. So what it is, is if I go to He's like setting up, parsing apart the bit fields yeah. in the bytecodes so that he has some handy, accessible uh, bit fields to help, you know. Ready for, ready to, to do it. I do it on everything so that I don't have to do it in everything. So I just do it once. And the, the mid three sets it for um, which one of these it is. So whether it's... Um, if it's zero, it will be in, in that section or, well, zero is, is that one, that one, that one, and that one. And obviously one is that one, that one. So just 
shifts it right four times, which takes it, yeah, takes it down. Um, yeah, on zero, yeah. So, so it, so basically, I know which um, which one of these is, or which which row, for, especially for um, things like uh, let's see if we've got mid three. Oh yeah, the set AF to SP. Right, so. For, for, it was for these instruc instructions where they have um, pop BC and pop DE and pop HL and pop AF or load BC, load DE, load HL and load SP. Um, and so I have that set to not one, two and three. And I have a, a thing called set AF to SP because um, the way I s stored the um where are they? Let me hire up. Yeah. The way I stored the 16 bit registers is B C D E H L and A F and I put S P after it because this one is pop A F but this is load S P comma and then and the next word. So I have a, a special routine on the um, right. See, I'm, with the push register, I get mid three, put it to reg ind index, and do get the sixteen bit register. And but with the um, load. Uh, yeah, the deck RR, deck RR, which is this one. Uh, the deck 16 bit register has got a deck BC, a uh, deck SP, where it would be an AF, which is, if you look at the um, push PSW and push a uh, pop PSW. So, what I do is um, I set mid three to be a uh, that set AF to SP, it compares it for three, and if said, it adds one and stores it in the reg index. So it's so that then says um, AF is three, but if it's if it's one that's got an SP because that's the fourth register in in our register set here, so we got. So this one's zero, that one, uh, that's zero. That's one. Now, Jim, you first that's you implemented this all in C, right? Because this is yeah. the first program you've ever written for the Prop 2, right? No, I've written loads of programs for the Prop, uh, prop 2. I did a load back when you started. I did a load of um, video stuff. Okay, okay. So but this is, this is the first like with the finished prop two. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, Cause, because cause you've, you've, with, you've made lots of changes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, this, yeah, what we have now is different from what you last worked on, but this is like the first application yeah. you wrote for the P2 yeah. in its current form. And so yeah. if Jim had modeled this on his, um, you want to show your PC running this? Because what he did first is, yeah. I mean, he's been doing this retro arcade stuff for a long time, he made a C program that runs on the PC yeah. that emulates the 8080, the screen, the sound, and everything, so he can prove that he right. has the right uh, yeah. concepts. And then he can take that and translate, you know, rewrite it in, say, P2 ASM and, uh, mm -hmm. and realize an emulator on the chip. But he first yeah. proved it all out. Uh, so I made sure it worked on, on this, which is like, it, I just set up a screen, and then I've got, like before where I had the showing the instructions and showing the PC so you can single step through it I can run fast through it or I can just go and I can turn the debug off and so I 
got this working first because it was faster to do this than it was to set up the the prop. Um, so I, I was I got this to do as a proof of concept to make sure it worked and make sure the invite the, the actual game run. And then once I got to this stage, I that was when I thought right I need to now swap over to. Um, hang on, you can you can you. You've not been able to see my screen, have you? We can see you it. Can just, yeah, you yeah. can just you can just see the game though, can't you? The game running. Yeah, not the, the whole. Game. You we're can't see my full whole, screen. We're seeing your whole screen. The game. Oh, you can't see the whole screen. Yeah. Portion in the middle of it. Yeah, I thought you you could only see that. I was like, no. <laughs> mm -hmm. Although I thought you'd have probably someone should have said something if uh, they couldn't see what I was talking about. Right. So anyway, yeah, I, I wrote it first in um, in C just to get it like the proof of concept. Then I got the video driver done. Then once the video driver was done, I started doing well. I did the the other cog, which is the render cog, which basically just gets the bits and and draws them in it with attributes. Um, so it just sets up the um, bitmap pointer and the line plus offset because you want to start at line five um, and then get the current line, compare with the current line. If it's not the current line that I want to draw, then just go back to the loop. So it waits for the um, the HDMI driver to tell us what line, no, tell us we're on the line that we need to draw in two, no, two lines ahead. And then we just read the border color in case the border changed. And then we basically draw to the um, draw. If it's a clear line, like the top and bottom border, we just do that bit, which just writes six, 640 um, border calls to it. Otherwise, we um, get screen address. Um, get the attributes address, get the pixels address, and then get um, this fills the left border, 64 um, pixels, but it's actually 32 fat pixels. And then we do 32 characters, reads the byte, and then gets the attribute for it, and then then pushes a clear or a set pixel, Put, does it twice because we're having fat, wide pixels because it's 640 pixels. We want to make it only be 320, so we do each pixel twice. Um, and then we put the right border on the, the next 64. And then if it's, if we just drawn bitmap, um, bitmap pointer one, then set it to bitmap pointer two, otherwise, Sets to bitmap point to one, so just toggles which line line buffer we draw to, and then adds one to the line. And then make sure we draw all two forty, and then toggle the fifty six pin, which is the LED on pin fifty six, and then jumps to the loop. So Jim, so, this was like something that the hardware did in the original arcade machine, right? It was separate yeah. from the eighty eighty program. Yeah. That's basically the one that draws the, the screen. Okay, so it had some special bit of hardware that would that would like buffer up a line of pixels and then shift it out while it loaded up the while the eighty eighty loaded up the other line. Yeah, well, I, I don't know. The eighty eighty just does runs the code. The um, the bitmap is stored in address in in a seven k buffer in memory. Right, and they had some kind of hardware though that would that would DMA that video memory and then this and output it as video. Yeah. And then well, they, it, it wouldn't DMA; it just read a byte, read to well, it would read a byte. The attributes was a um, a cover over the screen, you know, like a filter. Okay. Tra transparent filter. So it it color so the screen would just be black and white. And then um, the filter obviously made the colors. 
but we can't do that on the, uh, on the prop. So. It was like a translucent decal that went over the screen. Yeah, which is the old trick in the, trick in the old days for adding color to games in the yeah. arcades. Um, so we emulate that with the um, zoom. <laughs> How about uh, the audio? Uh, the audio, yeah. Um, basically, uh, the the game has some. Yeah, let me show you. Somebody, thankfully, has disassembled it and um, done some interesting information on the on the internet about it. Um, like you've got. 8K of RAM, 0 to 1F, and then you got 1K of RAM, and then you got your video RAM, 7K, and then um, RAM's mirrored at 4,000X. Ah, now the video RAM. We, do, we don't we don't do that because it doesn't um, the yeah, game doesn't access, so we don't need to mirror it. Okay. Right, and then we then we've got the I/O ports, and port zero is an input port, which we'll see below. And port one is an input port, and port two is an input. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. And then we've got like a, a shift, um, a barrel, barrel roll, which yeah, um, created an external, an external, external hardware you're using in and out instruction. So they had some hardware on the motherboard that they could load data into and then give it like a seven-bit shift value, and it would rotate it down. And that was just yeah. Things up enough that they could draw everything they wanted to, right? Yeah. So this shift in is the the value that when you do an in on port three, it'll give you the value the, the output from the barrel roll. Um, and then the shift amount is the amount of times you want it to roll, zero to seven. So you write now port PW port write the PRs port read. Um, so you write the naught to seven and then it'll it'll do a barrel roll on the shift data and then give you the uh, the data when you read port three and the shift data comes in to when you write to port four and it puts it in the, the upper back no, the high byte and then if you write again it'll rotate it well it'll shift it into the low, whatever's in the high byte, into the low byte, and then put the new value in the high byte. So you just write to it twice to get a 16-bit value, and then do the shift, and then. Uh, so um, this is where things depart from values. just purely um, emulating the 8080. Is that it realized, you know, it's it's I/O for like the the buttons at where the person would hit one yep. player, two player, left, right, fire, all that stuff. And the, and even some helper for software like this barrel shifter was done yep. using in and out instructions in the 8080. So when you make the 8080 emulator, you have to have some kind of like uh, implementation specific reports for that machine. Yeah, to, to replicate what that machine was looking for. So he's got a few little routines that will, you know, look up the push buttons on that board uh, when those in and out instructions hit those yep. certain uh those certain locations and then on here we've got um port three is sound one and port five is sound two so if we go down a bit um port three it's it'll set bit zero for the ufo which repeats and if it'll set um bit one of the shot there for the when you sh shoot um It'll set bit two for when the player dies. It'll set bit three for the invader dying. And on the on port five, bit um, bit zero is the first bump, and then bit one is the the second for the you know, the bump 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 mm. for the sound of the the fleet movement. And the <laughs> bit four is the UFO hit. So when you hit hit the UFO, Oops. so they must have had some extra. 
They must have had some extra hardware on that thing. motherboard to take these out commands and then generate sounds. Yeah. You know, the, were, were these like just analog synthesizer circuits or they must yeah. have been at that time, right? Yeah, it would have been, yeah. I remember that had boom, 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 kind of like a heartbeat. And it was like this descending pattern of four notes. So that, that just um, cycled through these four bits. Yeah. You know, that was kind of cinematic for the time. It I was. Guess always did that. But that sound was kind of uh, engaging. So basically what I had to do was, um, the, like, you, you've got other bits, like, um, Bit four was an extended play sound, but obviously th there is none for that because it doesn't use it. You must have had another sample on it as well. And um, bit five enables the amplifier. We don't need to worry about the amplifier because we haven't got an amplifier. Um, so we don't need to worry about any, well, whether we get that bit or not. Bit six and seven wasn't wired. Um, and then bit five, on the um, output port is to control the flip screen. So you can flip the screen upside down you know, for when it's player two, which would then tell the, the render screen, to, which I haven't bothered doing, but it, it was it's only if you're on a cocktail. You know, the, you know, the sit down cabinets, we have a player on e either end of the screen.